A flower pot is knocked off a window ledge and accelerates uniformly to the ground. If the window ledge is 10 meters above the ground and there is no air resistance, how long does it take the flower pot to reach the ground? Whenever we're solving kinematics problems, the first step that's very useful is to try to visualize it, which means to draw a picture. So you get to be as creative as you want. So here I have my flower pot and we can imagine it being by a window side and it gets knocked off and it's falling to the ground. And now let's try to go through our steps that we're doing for problem solving. So first step is visualizing it. The second step, we want to set up a coordinate system. In other words, we want to define where our zero position is going to be, our origin. Usually the best place to put it is at the ground level. So let's define the ground level to be our origin. And that means that our flower pot started 10 meters above the ground level. Once we set up the coordinate system, then we can define our displacement vectors. And in this case, because the flower pot is falling down, the displacement is occurring downwards. Our displacement vector is going to be pointing downwards. Delta D. And we take the convention that if the vector points downwards, we can give it a negative sign. So this will be negative 10 meters for the displacement. Once we got displacement vectors, then we can draw our velocity vectors. And because it just got knocked off a window, we may assume that the initial velocity is going to be zero. Now, usually in physics questions, when it hits the ground, you could take the final velocity to be zero, but we instead assume that moment just before it hits the ground. This means that we don't actually know how fast it was moving just before it hits the ground, so it's going to be unknown. We don't actually know that length of the vector. But during this whole trip, we're on the planet Earth, and in the planet Earth, we're locked in by gravity, so that's going to be our uniform acceleration. That's what the object, that's what the question means. When it, Whenever they say it accelerates uniformly, means that the acceleration value, in this case, is due to gravity. And because this points down towards the surface of the Earth, we give it a negative and we approximate it by negative 9.8 meters per second squared. And this all took place during some time interval, delta t. And this, we don't actually know what it is, so we leave it as an unknown. We put a question mark next to it. And in the next step, we're going to write down the three main equations of motion. So although there are five, I find that usually I only require three. So we're going to only write three because that's what you're going to need most of the time. Now let's go back and read the question again quickly to see that we didn't miss any information there. So a flower pot is knocked off a window ledge and it accelerates uniformly to the ground. If the window ledge is 10 meters above the ground and there is no air resistance, how long does it take for the flower pot to reach the ground? So we are looking for the change in time. We're not interested in the final velocity right now. This means that from our three equations of motion, we want to see which ones have the change in time in it. So that way we can narrow down our focus. Notice that the third equation doesn't depend on the change in time, so we won't be using it as our candidate in this case for now. Then we highlight in green the, one, the quantities that were given. We have the displacement vector, we have the initial velocity, and the acceleration due to gravity. Oh, it turns out that I am going to be using the first equation. So the second equation wouldn't have been useful, although I had the initial velocity, I did not know the final velocity. So that means I would have had two unknowns in that equation. So because I have one unknown, which is the change in time from the first equation, that's the equation I'm going to be using. So we're going to rewrite it and then substitute in the values because this is the beginner level. Usually you will use the algebra instead, but as a beginner, it's okay to sub in the values for now. From our equation, we know that the initial velocity is zero and our displacement was negative because it was pointing down so we're going to put in negative 10 and because we're on the planet earth our gravitational acceleration is downwards and we also give it a negative sign so it's negative 9.8 and delta t squared is what we're going to try to find well delta t only 
notice here we can cancel out the negative on both sides by dividing by negative 1 on both sides of the equation. This simplifies to 10 equals to 1 over 2 times 9.8 delta t squared. Our focus is to isolate for the delta t. This means that we're going to divide both sides by the coefficient of our delta t. Our coefficient then is going to be 1 over 2. 9.8 we're going to divide both sides because that's how we respect the equal sign in here so we're going to divide both sides by 1 over 2 times 9.8 and this simplifies to give us delta t squared but our goal is to get delta t on its own so we're going to have to take the square root on both sides of the equation so delta t equals to the square root of 10 divided by 1 over 2 times 9.8 Let's substitute that into a calculator. And you should approximately get 1.4 seconds. We find that the flower pot takes 1.4 seconds to hit the ground. This seems reasonable, right? It was 10 meters above. As a quick recap, what is the way we're going to solve questions? First, visualize it. Secondly, define your origin. Third, displacement vector. Fourth, velocity. Fifth, acceleration. Sixth, your time intervals. Seventh, the equations of motion in general. Then you use the systems of equations, or sometimes you only need to use one equation. That's step eight. Nine, you look back at your answers, reflect, and analyze that you did it all correct. Usually, sources of error are you're not using the correct units. So you try to make sure it's in meters, meters per second, meters per second square, seconds. And also that you consider the direction. So up is positive, down is negative for vector quantities and to scalar equation quantities. And if you want to go see more problems, please hit subscribe and then I'll see you in my next video. Until next time.